Let's say that we have uh, two macroscopic systems A and A prime are interacting. So I have some sort of interaction between systems A and A prime. And we're going to talk about the nature of the interaction uh, that can occur between these two systems. And the total system A plus A prime, which I'm calling A star, is isolated and therefore uh, we can have energy exchange between A and A prime but not between A star and the environment. So A and A prime can exchange energy because they're in interaction uh, but A star is isolated, so A star cannot exchange energy with the environment. And we form an ensemble of N uh, similar systems for A and A prime in interaction, as you can see here. So in this ensemble, uh, we can determine the average value of the total energy in system A and system a prime. So in the ensemble of N uh, systems, we can determine uh, the initial mean energies before the interaction. So that would be EI bar and EI prime bar. And final mean energies after the interaction E final bar plus E final prime bar. So this is after the interaction between two systems, A and A prime. Now, since we have E star, which is E plus E prime, is a constant because uh, A star is an isolated uh, system, we can write uh, for the total energy before interaction, EI plus EI prime bar, this must be equal to the final mean energy, total mean energy, after the interaction, because these are fixed to be E star. So this equation tells me that if you write E final bar, minus E initial bar. This is the change in the mean energy of the uh, unprimed system this way. And similarly, if you look at e, e final prime bar and E initial prime bar, the difference, that's the change in the mean energy of the primed system. You can see from this equation that if you take uh, the E initial to the right hand side, you will have uh, zero is equal to E final bar minus E initial bar and also E final prime bar minus E initial prime bar. Therefore, the change in the mean energy of the unprimed system plus the change in the mean energy of the prime system must be zero. Now the question is, uh, what type of interaction can I have? Well, we can have two types of interaction. Uh, we're going to talk about the first one is uh, thermal interaction. In the, t in the case of thermal interaction between these two systems, uh, we have a thermal contact and heat can be exchanged or energy in the form of heat can be exchanged between the two systems and that's happening due to collusions between the particles that make up these two systems at the boundary. So it's a, uh, on the microscopic scale it's a transfer of kinetic energy between the two systems and the, the second one involves no heat exchange it's adiabatic interaction uh, in this case, we have a mechanical work that is being done on, by one system 
on the other. So this is transfer of uh, mechanical energy by uh, due to the pressure difference or force difference between the two sides of the boundary uh, that uh, connects system A and system A prime. Okay, so we're going to concentrate on thermal interaction uh, for the rest of this video and then we will talk about adiabatic interaction in the next video. In the case of uh, thermal interaction, uh, we have all external parameters are fixed or assuming that all external uh, parameters are fixed. And when the external parameters are fixed, uh, this is going to imply energy levels remain unchanged. Energy levels remain unchanged. Okay, so uh, the amount of energy that I'm transferring to system A is delta E bar. That is the change in the mean energy of the unprimed system. So the amount of heat absorbed by the unprimed system is the change in its mean total energy. This is heat absorbed uh, by system A. And similarly, I have a Q prime. The change in the mean energy of the prime system uh, is heat absorbed by A prime. So since I have uh, the change in the mean energy of system A plus A prime is zero because the total system is isolated, I can also write this as heat absorbed by system A plus heat absorbed by system A prime is zero. In other words, heat absorbed by system A is minus the heat absorbed by system A prime, which is heat released by the system A prime. So this is an important observation. Heat absorbed by system A is equal to the heat released. Heat released by system A prime or minus the heat absorbed by system A prime or heat is heat that is released by the system A prime. And how does heat flow occur? Uh, as you know, heat is always transferred from the warm system to the cold system uh, because you have the temperature difference and kinetic energy, average kinetic energy is higher in the warmer side. So the way this heat flow will occur heat is absorbed by the colder system where the temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy per molecule and released by the warmer system which has a higher average kinetic energy per molecule. So if the heat is absorbed by system A, that means A is colder than B. Okay, so let's put as an example here. If Q is positive, Q prime is negative. That means temperature of system A is less than temperature of system A prime. So that A prime releases heat in order to reach the equilibrium with system A. Now, I want to demonstrate this for an example. Let's say that we have system A uh, is a single spin one half particle in a solid and system A prime is a hot liquid. So there will be energy transfer from system A prime to system A. So uh, looking at the energy diagram uh, here, energy level diagram, uh, there is an external magnetic field that I'm applying on the system. Uh, this is magnetic field B. 
but since the external parameters on the system are fixed so before the interaction I have the same magnetic field and after the interaction I have the same magnetic field being applied on the system so this magnetic field sets the energy levels of the uh, single spin system it's plus mu zero b or minus mu zero b and the probability let's say of uh, having an up uh, or down moment energy plus mu zero b is 0 0.1 or having an up moment and corresponding energy minus mu zero b uh, probability is 0 0.9 now if i add energy to the system by transferring energy in the form of heat from the hot liquid to the single spin system this is not going to affect the energy levels because energy levels are fixed by uh, the magnetic field b however the probability of occupancy of these energy levels will change okay so in this case we're going to have initial uh, average energy of the unprimed system uh, probability of having a, a minus moment multiplied by the energy plus probability of having a plus moment multiplied by its energy so this will be a 0.1 mu zero b uh, and then I have minus 0.9 mu zero b average energy is minus 0 0.08 mu zero b <clears throat> now since i'm going to have delta e bar positive e final bar has to be greater than e initial bar so i look at e final bar it is now 0 0.4 mu zero b and minus 0 0.6 mu zero b minus 0 0.2 mu zero b so what is the change in the total mean energy of the system minus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 mu zero b which is 0 0.6 mu zero b indeed positive energy is transferred from the hot liquid uh, to the cold spin one half particle in uh, that is embedded in the solid and it's going to be uh, the thermal interaction between the, the system A and A prime, single spin one half and hot liquid, causes a change in the probability of occupancy of the uh, energy levels, not uh, any change uh, in the energy levels themselves. Okay, so basically we have demonstrated that thermal interaction, thermal interaction, Uh, effects probability of occupancy of the energy levels so this is an important observation that we make about this system okay so uh, in summary what we're looking at is the interaction between two systems A and A prime where the total system A star is isolated if these two systems are allowed to exchange energy then there will be a change in the mean energy of system A and mean energy of system A prime such that the the change in the mean energy of the star system is zero uh, there are two types of interaction thermal interaction where we have energy transfer in the form of heat or adiabatic interaction where we have energy transfer in the form of mechanical work done on uh, any of these two systems so at, uh, at the moment we are concentrating on thermal interaction with all external parameters fixed the energy levels remain unchanged the heat absorbed by any system is the change in the mean energy of the system so that the heat absorbed by system a and a prime in interaction add up to zero uh, and if the heat is absorbed by a system a that means it is the cold system and the heat is released by system a prime that means it's the hot system or warmer system 
This happens due to a temperature difference, which corresponds to, on the microscopic scale, a difference in the mean kinetic energies of the molecules. Now we have demonstrated this for a single spin one half in interaction with a hot liquid, where we see that the external parameter magnetic field is fixed and that gives us the energy levels plus mu zero b and minus b zero b. However, the probability of occupancy of these energy levels change as a result of interaction. So the, the case that I'm showing in A is before interaction and the case that I'm showing in B is after interaction. And we see that the probability of occupancy of higher energy levels increased and the probability of occupancy of lower energy levels decreased, which means there is a net energy transfer to the system so that delta E bar is positive as expected.